welcome to my history channel. Are you ready to learn about poison? So this video is going to be totally different than what I'm used to filming. I actually have to set up a tripod and I haven't done that in four ever. So I'm gonna do it all comfy if you don't mind. I contemplated dressing up. I'm not gonna dress up. It's not that special of a vacation. Vacation? Occasion. Let's learn about some history. Okay, I got to get this set up now. Oh, it's gonna take forever. Hi everyone, I'm Atlas, also known as Trying to Find Atlas. I've decided that I'm going to present to you my history final from eighth grade, which is the everyday use of arsenic in the 1800s. Uh, there's definitely more in-depth research I could do. However, I want to highlight some of the most fascinating points about this already fascinating topic and dumb it down a little bit. Before I get started, make sure to like and subscribe and turn on notifications so that you never miss a video. I try to upload every single Wednesday, but if I do happen to miss one, I am so sorry and I deeply apologize. Just to give you a quick rundown of what the heck happened during the 18th century so that we can kind of get in the mindset for when this was all taking place, I'm gonna, I'm gonna list off some major events. So in, the, in 1800 exactly, it was the invention of the modern day battery and the first use of the White House. And Napoleon also marched into Austria. And in 1804, the Lewis and Clark expedition happened. In 1803, the Louisiana Purchase was made in the United States. And in 1807, the slave trade in the UK was abolished. In 1837, Queen Victoria ascended to the throne, and now we are in the Victorian period. In 1843, the Oregon Trail happened, and in 1842, Britain took Hong Kong. Hong Kong. And then in 1892, the Adventures of Sherlock Holmes happened. So, there you go. So now that we have an idea of what this time period was like, let's look at the everyday use of arsenic in the 1800s. So what is arsenic? Arsenic is a poison that is naturally distributed in the Earth's crust, so it's not like we invented it in a lab. It is tasteless, colorless, and odorless, so it's very easy to just, you know, slip it into drinks or do what these people were doing. Skin lesions, vomiting, nervous system damage, and cancers are a result of arsenic poisoning. Again, this is a very dumbed-down version. There are so many different types of symptoms. So arsenic is fine if consumed in very small quantities, so just don't be super afraid of it. But long-term exposure is deadly, and it can even become addictive as tolerance is built, but you'll still die, even if you're tolerant to it for a while, you know? In the 1800s, it was used in wallpaper, paint, hair and clothing dyes, candles, medicine, candy and food, beer, wine, and makeup. They were using it in medicine. Again, it was fine in small doses, but medicines are usually repeatedly taken, so that counts as long-term exposure, especially the wallpaper and paint, because that is also long-term exposure. I mean, you're around it constantly, and we're gonna explore that more in depth in a second. So really the entire, um, the passion of this topic, that the reason I'm doing this as a history final was because I was scrolling through TikTok and someone was like, guys, Shields Green. And I was like, whoa, that's interesting. So let's learn about Shields Green. Loaded with copper arsenite, Shields Green is a cheap to make and vibrant shade of green. It is also commonly known as Paris Green and Emerald Green. The dye was invented in 1775 by Carl William Scheele, a Swedish chemist, and quickly became a trend. People started to, to People started to die or fall ill after inhaling the arsenic as it came off in their wallpaper or absorbed into their skin after wearing it or playing with it. So that long-term exposure is super high and it's a trend. So that's even worse. So like people are begging to have it, like they want to have it on them and in their homes and what. So here's how it was used in makeup. So the beauty standard in the 1800s was pale skin. I mean, it's the 1800s. It signified that a lady didn't have to work in the sun and that she was super duper privileged and she could just stay home and lounge all day. And arsenic gave him the translucent look. A little odd way to put it, but you know, that's what they were seeking. So putting poison on your skin daily obviously isn't very good for you. A beauty magazine from the time actually warned of all of the risks. So they were definitely aware of this. However, the risks did not outweigh the benefits as it was still encouraged to bathe regularly in arsenic springs. So arsenic can be found in like different mineral springs, I suppose. There's some in Yellowstone, I believe. And so, you know, people just bathe in that to become translucent. 
if it's something's making you pale, that's not good. So a very famous incident of arsenic poisoning was the 1858 Bradford Sweets poisoning. And this is a specific incident where 200 people fell ill and 20 died. It wasn't super deadly, but it was still like deadly. I wonder how many sweets these people who died were consuming. Anyway, to learn how so much arsenic found its way into the humbug candies at Bradford Sweets, we have to learn about death. So we're taking a little tangent here. Due to the high prices of sugar, a small amount of sugar was mixed with powdered limestone or plaster of Paris to make the daft. And this was like a sugar substitute that they used. It was perfectly harmless, but it was just not tasty. The sweet poisoning happened when the daft got mixed up with 12 pounds of arsenic. And although the deaths and illnesses of many people was sad, it did lead to new legislation to protect the public from another incident. So, you know, there's a silver lining to this cloud. But again, rest in peace to all the people who ate so much humbugs and then died. Mm. When you think of like poison, you probably think of like people being poisoned or people poisoning other people. So this is probably the obvious usage, but yes, arsenic was used for murder. So with how common arsenic was, it was used for many murders. And these those administering the poison were mainly wives or women in general. And they were kept physically weak because, you know, misogyny. So poison was the perfect way for them to kill. And it was also a very smart way to kill. It helped that they made all of the food in the household so they could sneak that poison in there. The picture on the right is of Mary Ann Cotton, who was suspected of killing 21 plus pe people for her insurance payout. These were her husbands, her stepchildren, and her children. And she was sentenced to death in 1873 after they actually decided to do an autopsy on these bodies. And I realized that the sun is going down and it's probably gonna get really, really dark in here soon. So I should probably wrap up. Modern day arsenic contamination. We have so many like drinking problems around the world. Like just look up Nestle guys. Just look up Nestle. I'm gonna turn on this light. It's really dark in here. Water is something that um, many developing countries and even just like other countries just people have water contamination all of the time and it's really hard to find safe drinking water i really don't know how our ancestors survived but arsenic is definitely not a thing of the past as said before it is naturally found in the earth's crust and it can now be found in contaminated water and crops that were watered with that water and in some seafood obviously small amounts are not deadly unless it's like large amounts like you're drinking straight arsenic water I think you'll be fine, but like the seafood thing, don't worry about that because you know, small amounts. The last slide just says, thank you. The background of my slides is green, like shield screen. It wasn't really enrolled, but you get the point. I just think that poison and deaths and human behavior, especially the cruel ones are just so fascinating. I think I said that exact line in my last vlog. Anyway, I will see you all next time. Don't die. Yeah, I'll see you all next time. Good.